Freud had some interesting things to say. I, there's some things that are not very interesting that he had to say as well. But nevertheless, historically, he identified and made explicit the fact that a human being undergoing change is stepping into the unknown. And they're going to be extremely sensitive to signals, nonverbal as well as verbal, but especially nonverbal, from the only stable reference point that they have, namely the agent of change, which psychiatrists, or psychoanalysts, or whatever, right? So in, in order to protect the integrity of his clients, he faced them away from him on a couch so they could not be influenced by the visual input of his r physiological responses. I applaud this. I, I think that there's a special relationship in a change process whereby you reduce any imposition of content because this person's going to be very responsive to your lead and you don't want that. You want them to find their own way. Your job is to create a context where they develop their own choices, not where you present them. In business, menus are quite justified. I've got a CEO and I go, boss, uh, he's just given me a, delegated a, a new project to me. I go, boss, thanks for your confidence in me. May I ask you a series of questions to make sure I have a clear understanding, clear understanding of what it is you want me to do. Now, you've just created by framing, that's a frame. You've just created by framing the opportunity to interrogate the boss which if you just started doing, would not be acceptable in many traditional firms. But you've justified it with the frame in order to make sure I deliver the product that you're delegating to me, this project. May I ask you a series of clarification questions? And I mean, if the boss says no, go find another job anyway. <laughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to deal with people like that. Okay, so this is ways of frame. Now, instead of doing, I mean, Freud tied his hands behind his back by facing the client away from him. Obviously, the voice quality differences still carry all the same information, so it was not an effective filter, but it was a statement that I think we should take seriously about the ethics of change work. Instead of reducing your hand movements, use them. So we discovered Lisa was working with, I'm sorry, you can't, Sarah? Yeah, with Sarah, and I went over to her and I said, you're doing this quite well. What I'd like you to do is to see as the storyteller whether you can use the natural movements in the story to, to, to specify the representational system eye movement that she's going to give you, which you will then have to respond to. So this is, and of course it works very well. And she said, as a matter of fact, oh my, I've been doing that already. So these, th I propose that you use it all. You're an actress. You, only, uh, you have a, the key part in a, a particular play called Theater of the Absurd. And so use it all. So instead of having, reducing your eye movements become quiescent, use them, but use them systematically to take the person to the representational system, which is either missing, which they're avoiding, which they seem to have difficulty operating in, and so they can operate. And the gift is quite remarkable. It changes the perceptions of their, their life. So use this special talent, you know, and, and make use of it by using it in a systematic fashion. That would be my recommendation. Anybody else? <laughs>